Hello everyone. My name is Shailesh Kohel. I'm from Ahmedabad. I have uh, more than a decade of experience in uh, software testing and quality assurance, uh, wherein I have worked in multiple assignments in performance testing. So some of you are already doing the performance testing. Some of you are planning for that. Some of you are learning. So when we are doing performance testing, some or other mistakes where we, uh, we are doing. So today I would like to highlight some of the common mistakes with we are doing while we are performing the load testing or performance testing and what are the best practices for this. So let's begin. So very first mistakes that we all do is inadequate user think time. So generally what happened is how we design our scripts. Let's take an example. This is one of the script for one of the uh, online shopping uh, website. And I have created a script like I just do the login, then the search, then I'm selecting a product, I'm doing the payment and log out. When I run my script, then I think, okay, why my response time is very low? Because when I, uh, when I, when I use the website uh, with a single user, it's not that, but with single user, I'm getting very low response time. Because uh, all my uh, transactions, login, search, select product, payment, and all are getting executed uh, one by one sequentially. What happened in actual, how the actual user will work. So user will go, go to the website, login, once login, user will look at the page, look at like some offers or what is there in the page, uh, or he'll read something, then he will go to the search, enter search query, then once search result will be there, user will just look at the results and scroll it down, go to the paginations. After that, uh, he or she will select some product. Once selecting the product, then, user will uh, again enter some uh, details, bank details, addresses and all, and then we'll do the payment. So between all these transactions, there are some kind of delay. We call it a think time, right? Even while doing that thing, few users will be live, uh, live at the search, few will left by the, at the select product and all. So when we are creating our load testing script, we need to mimic the same behavior. And how to do that, we need to at the think time between two. So how I should uh, create my script is, I should uh, capture a login scenario, then I need to add some think time. We call it a think time or a delay, then the search and add some think time and add a product and add some more think time and the logout. So this is the best practices that you can use. How you can add the think time. I'm uh, considering JMeter as a load testing tool over here. So there are a couple of timers JMeter is giving us. There are like random timers, constant timer, Gaussian timer, etc. You can use any of the timer and you can add the think time. So that's the best practices. Another mistake then we do is inaccurate workload model. So let's say I want to test for 100 users. So what should be my workload model? I should load all the 100 users uh, at uh, uh, in, in very beginning and then I should hold my load. I should keep adding the users every, let's say one second, five users, one second, five users, or let's say every one second, one users. So what should be my the load model? So that totally depends. Let's take an example that Flipkart has a big billion day and it's starting at let's say at 12 o'clock today. So all the users will be there. So in, in that case, I have this uh, particular load model will be uh, suitable. Another case, uh, it will be this. So how to decide a workload model? What we need to do for that is, we need to first ask the question. We need to ask the question to the stakeholders, to our users, and uh, to uh, whatever people are like uh, connected with the project. The questions like, what are the most common or the popular transactions? How many uh, transactions happen in a typical day? How many transactions happen in the peak day? And all these things. When you have all these informations, you would be able to create your uh, load model. Let's say I'm, I want to do the load test. Then what I'll do is I'll ramp up my users, let's say five users every second. After uh, some point of time, when let's say 100 users have been uh, already loaded, we will just hold that load for some time, let's say 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. We call it a steady time. But if I want to do the peak test, what I'll do is I'll ramp up, let's say five users every second uh, for 20 seconds or something, then there will be a spike of users. So in like another second, we will just add 100 uh, another users and then again uh, five users every second, something like that. So we need to create our load model accordingly. If you are working in JMeter, how you can do that? Instead of using the normal thread group, there are some plugins available but with some other thread group like concurrency thread group, ultimate thread groups and all. You can uh, do that thing and you can achieve it uh, with that. 
Another mistake that we do is improper or the no infrastructure monitoring. Let's take an example that this is the result of my last three run with 100 users, 500 users, and 1000 users. Now with 100 users, what I am getting is 2.2 is my average response time. With 500 users, it's a 3.1 and with 1000 users, it's a 3. So from 500 to 1000 users, it's decreasing. But the error rate you can see is a 5% with 500 users, 30% with 1000 users. We don't have much information over here. Let's take a look at this table. I have added one more column, which is, which is CPU utilizations with 100 users. My CPU utilization was 90 seconds, but with 500 users, it reached to 100%. Uh, uh, so once I my CPU usage uh, reached to 100%, I should stop my uh, 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 performance testing and I should uh, first check with my infra. I need to increase my infra and also proper infrastructure monitoring is very much crucial. You can use some tools like AppDynamics, Popmon, Dynatrace, New Relic, etc. So you can have some very good error logs and all and you got to know okay, what's that. Another thing is inappropriate data. Let's say I have three tests and each all the thread, uh, all the three tests uh, I am using a sim similar kind of uh, data set, which is a first time is John, last time in Matt, mobile is blah, 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 and all. So uh, to nowadays, all the modern technologies and intelligent database, they are using the caching. So if I have three tests or 300 such tests with similar data, what will happen is it will get the data from cache. So you will not get the ex uh, exit result that you are supposed to. What you need to do is if you are using JMeter, there are some functions available like random string, random number generating and all. So instead of like a mo same mobile number, what you can do is you can use the random number generator or what you, else you can use is you can use the data generator and you can use the CSV data reading in the JMeter. This way you can achieve what you want to uh, do. It will be, uh, have, you will have a, a different data set. Another thing what you what we make a mistake is a, we work in the blank database. Let's say my assumption is I, in my production there, there will be a one TB of data. But in my staging when I'm doing my performance testing, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using only 100 or 100 records, 1000 records and all. So let's say there is one query, select star from my table where name is test flex. With 100 row, it, uh, it takes a result in 0.5 seconds. But if there are 1 million rows, it will take 5 seconds. So this is make a difference. What we need to do is we need to uh, use with the uh, huge data, which is something we have considered that we will have this much of data set. Other than that, there are other mistakes that also we make is like, we should not have our load engine in the same geography, but we should have it the, uh, where the actual end, end users insights. We should not overload uh, our load injectors. We should use the distributed load uh, generation. We should not test only in the land. We should not ignore any scripting error and all. So these are some of the common mistakes that I would like to highlight. And I hope that you guys will not take and you'll uh, follow the best practices. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.